Hello, everybody. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. I am this program's co-host, Soto Brown, and with us verbally and in by picture only is the program's host, Martin Despang, who's speaking to us from Germany, his homeland. And Martin, good afternoon. There you are on the screen. Hello to Soto and everyone, and that's right. I'm still in the Durndal realm of our tropical tourist expert, Suzanne, that's in right. her native Bavaria, Germany. Yeah. And to Soto, one of our methodologies of research is what we can call reciprocal exoticism. And if we can go to the first slide yes. here, the big picture, we are. that is on our strip, uh, our meaning yours right now, on the strip of Kalakaua in Waikiki on June 9th, 1963. And you found a sign of uh, reciprocal um, uh, exoticism between our cultures, right? Yes, what is I that certainly about? did. And it is on the left side of the picture, and it is for a German restaurant and bar. And I'm not even going to try to say it because I can't say it the correct way. Martin, you tell us what that's called. Hof Roy, but you tell us what that means because I taught you that. That's right. And it means uh, the court or royal um, brewer, correct? You get an A for that. Yay. Correct. Now, but so, what's behind well, that course, sign is this more is architecture, right? This is, and what's behind mm -hmm. that sign is what we're actually going to be talking about today. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about what you think we might talk about, which is the building that's pretty centered, yes. because that's Foster Tower. That was built a year before the building was built that we're going to talk about, which we also see on the very left, which is almost completed, but you see some scaffolding and some guardrails failing, uh, missing, not failing yet. No, no, not and, really. and again, what you also see is the motorcade of President Kennedy yes. uh, in his Black Lincoln Continental, which became tragically famous because he got shot in that three months later in Texas. Yes. Talking Presidents gets us to the next picture uh, because we have been featuring two other buildings about this uh, architect who was actually not an architect. Um, he was a, um, an engineer. And um, he did uh, these two other buildings here, which at the bottom is the Scandia building, which is in our immediate neighborhood, uh, both of us, DeSoto. And the other one where one of the most recent and which we consider one of the best, which is not the current one, President uh, lived in and grew up in, that's President Obama. <laughs> and that's the apartment building he grew up in with his grandmother. That's right. And uh, uh, the architect is called um, uh, Park uh, Associates. Yes. And um, you see that both buildings are square and boxy. Right. But the building he did, we're going to talk about, is not. And that gets us to the next slide. And as you pointed out when we talked before, the zeitgeist of the 60s was sexy and curvy. And some architects, like this one here, who was the enfant terrible of the Mies van der Rohe School of Architecture. This is Bertrand Goldberg, who showed his master his round middle finger, mm -hmm. figuratively yes. and literally, yes. and basically said, I'm not going to do a square box. I'm going to do a sexy uh, corn cup in this case. This is yes. Marina City in Chicago that was built, uh, that was completed in 64. But let's go back to our island to the next slide and please tell us other round buildings that we have and that we talked about. Well, we've looked at some of the other cylindrical buildings that are here in Honolulu. And in the upper two pictures, of course, we see the Varsity Building, which is still with us today. It's a small four-story building, but it is cylindrical. And then at the bottom, we see some of the University of Hawaii cylindrically shaped dome, uh, dorms, not domes which also are present, and you were talking about uh, the man who was critiquing these when he came to visit. Tell us about him. Yeah, that, that's Will Bruder, our esteemed colleague from Arizona, who was here to visit and give a lecture. And again, he was, he was intrigued by, by these buildings. And how sexy they, they were is portrayed perfectly in the next slide here, which Hawaii Five-O always picked. He yep. picked buildings as actors. It's as we talked about in the show about that. And so here is another round building that's uh, pretty centrally located, the Holiday Village, as well from the 60s. Let's go back to our hood, where our building is. 
next slide here is a picture from these days where you can see Foster Tower clearly, and you can also see to the left of that, and I think by now we can mention the name of the building. The building we're talking about is the Waikiki Circle Hotel. And let's jump to the next picture, and these are some that we picked from the web and uh, other better ones from your archive. And tell us a little bit about sort of the zeitgeist background of the pictures we see now, the postcard pictures. What so, we're talking about is Waikiki in the 1960s, when it was growing very dramatically and lots of high-rises were being built. And when Foster Tower followed by the Waikiki Circle were constructed, people began to take photos of them because for the first time there was something to aim your camera at. And before that time, there hadn't been any skyline there, so we weren't seeing people taking a lot of pictures. In this particular picture of Kalakaua Avenue, there is right in the center a Volkswagen Beetle. And that's something that we're going to be talking about in a future Human Humane Architecture show, air-cooled architecture, but we're not there yet. And I think we can go to our next yeah. photograph. But that's a perfect example, the total again, of our methodology of um, reciprocal exoticism yeah. because you guys were excited about these bugs yep. from Germany. And to the left of it, I was excited and still am about the T-Bird <laughs> kind of cars, which is a true American, right? Right. So the grass and the car is always greener that's on right. the other side. That's right. That's right. That's right. And in Move this picture. Move on to the next picture. Yeah. So again, we're just seeing some of the some of the street scenes of Waikiki, a bustling and very increasingly congested district at that time. And here's a black and white victor of pretty much the same thing, but there, very prominently on the left, is the Waikiki Circle, which we're now going to be examining in more detail. Exactly, and that's the next picture. These are some that we took. This is us looking up at the tower and our Tropic Hearing Fellow, David Rockwood. Um, once talked to me about how intriguingly thin these lanai slabs are. You gotta, you gotta imagine there has to be rebar in there, so steel to make them hold up, but also there are these light fixtures in there. So you gotta get the wiring across the rebar. And I can tell you, being in the practice of architecture realm as research, you will find no structural engineer these days who's, who will have the guts to basically do that. So that shows us how sort of ambitious and exploratory and innovative people were, and probably here because the, the designer was an engineer. So right. he was probably relaxed and saying, hey, I can do that right. because that's my business. Right, right, right. right. And it wasn't mysterious so, or scary to him. No, no, it was Today, these would be twice as big or three yeah. times and would look chunky, ugly. Yes. And yes. that's, you know, I mean, you've got to wonder about culture, right? About evolution or de-evolution, but let's not get no. uh, tied up there. Let's go to the next picture, which we took here. And you can see clearly how, uh, you know, people on these still pretty floaty lanai's, they're like a term that you taught me, uh, the petals Petal. of the flower. These that's are right. like petal-like uh, balconies lanai, and you pretty much float out there and enjoy this sort of prime location, first row in, in, in Waikiki Beach. Yes. And, and you were pointing out uh, an interesting sort of utilitarian advantage of that sort of geometry, which yeah. we see in the next slide, which is one that we took from the web, from the hotel's website. And right. what is that aspect? Well, because the building is round and cylindrical, each one of these individual lanai's is not directly next to the next one. And it also has a little more of privacy because you're around the corner, to, if you will, from the other lanai. So each one is not directly rectangularly next to each other, but instead they're all a little bit spaced out and all at slightly different angles. Mm -hmm. And the next slide is another picture of how it looks today. We want to point out another aspect, which is the bioclimatic aspect, which is very important to us. And while a cylindric form is sort of a non, is non directional, so you get naturally some units that are facing east and west, they're probably more problematic. But I've been watching this over the time because it's on my daily jogging route on the, on the Waikiki Beach. And so I'm, I'm always seeing that always at some times of the day, some parts of the buildings are, are, are shading themselves, again, just like nature does it with the leaves on, on a plant, right? Yes. So there's some, you know, the geometry is not, is not perfect, but again, there's, and especially if we look at some 
Another aspect, which we see on the next slide, which is another one that we picked from the web, we see something sort of confusing and I would say disturbing because we're the sort of the post-fossil and, and pre-fossil enthusiasts. We see that nasty single wall unit, fossilly fueled AC unit. And that's puzzling us because uh, AC was not in place yet as much as it is today Correct. in mid-century. Right. So how did that look slash work way back? And thanks to your uh, scavenger hunting out there, you found a proof of evidence of how it was significantly different way yes. back, and that gets us to the next slide that you please explain to us. Well, as you pointed out when we were discussing this last night, this is a, an amateur slide which I purchased on eBay, and unfortunately somebody put their finger across the lens when they took the picture. But ignoring that, you look at the exterior of the Waikiki Circle, and what do you see? You don't see solid walls, and you don't see air conditioners. You see walls which are composed of solid wood jealousies. So these are not see-through, they're not glass, there's more privacy there, but that meant that every one of these rooms was air-conditioned, if you will, by natural air movement of not only the sliding doors on the lanais, but also the jealousies which could be in individually adjusted in each room. And so they weren't it wasn't necessary to have air conditioners then, they had the trade winds, they had natural air movement, and we've talked about uh, jealousies. Uh, Don Hibbert and I did a program about jealousies, and we've also seen um, new, more ad modern applications of jealousies, not only by designers, but also from manufacturers. And so we look forward to more of those coming out, and some of those are actually coming from Germany. Mm -hmm. And that's at the bottom right. This is a class going on right now and wrapping up because the semester is concluding. This is Tropicare Rockwood again, which is a very, very relevant uh, course that he teaches about the rejuvenation and the revitalization of that typology. So tropical typology, because I'm saying, yeah, easy breezy. That is easy breezy, right? You pretty yep. much, as you said, it's an all open fenestration yes. that's differentiated uh, by uh, sliding doors on the lanai, and then the wooden jealousies, as you pointed out, that gives you the variety of things. When the western sun that we talked about, that you might be sort of discriminated by facing with, you can close them off, but you can close them off in a way that you still get breeze and air and yes. light through it, yes. right? So right. It's, this is perfect. Again, perfectly engineered, the architect having been an engineer. And as I'm biting my own hand uh, for the longest time, I've thinking maybe the engineer have been and might continue to be the better architect. But again, blame me for that, that me at the School of Architecture and an architect myself say that, but I don't have a problem because we want to encourage architects right. to think more logically right. and less romantically right. uh, formally, right? Correct. We want to be substantially, um, you know, um, uh, fundamental in, in our thinking and making. Another intriguing uh, detail that is not in place anymore uh, we find on the next slide here, which is the guardrail detail. Yeah. And you were pointing out to us yesterday when we were rehearsing here that this is uh, it's ironwork, yes. uh, um, so steel ironwork, handmade, and then there is something that uh, traces to the owner. Yeah and developer of the project, which who is innovative in so many ways, because first of all, I believe this is not he, her, this is a tourist, but uh, the developer was a woman, yes. Mrs. Chun, and Mrs. Chun was Chinese, that means she was a minority, and she was 70 years young when she was developing the, the project, and of course she was a woman. Yeah. And her, and her Chinese uh, background basically probably informed sort of the, uh, the, the shape and the, the, yes. the sort of the symbolic form of these little circular details. Right. And I was saying, well, and that's sort of in, in sort of a micro compliance with the overall form. And then we're joking that the, the tourist here, the lady is in compliance with that too because she has <laughs> dots on her She's shirt. got a polka dot garment on. <laughs> well, you pointed out earlier too that these original railings, which are not there anymore, by the way, uh, are very filigree. They're very delicate looking. They're not super substantial, but like the platforms of the lanais themselves, they are thin and lightweight. You can see through them, and there's a delicacy to them, which again is a unique design uh, attribute as well as something which is handmade work, which you'd be very unlikely to encounter these days in a modern project. 
In, indeed. And how it looks today, if we move to the next slide, we can see not that these are bad. These are also, we always say no glass because then there is no breathing anymore and uh, you block the wind. So these are very sort of simple vertical uh, metal guardrails that, you know, allow ventilation, allow the view, but they don't have anything of the intricacy of the sort of multitude of meaning um, and certainly not the craft um, yeah. uh, sort of noblesse that the original one had. Correct. So, so again, but, but the other thing is, again, you can see here this almost ironic um, uh, ornament of this sort of uh, staggered single wall unit AC boxes here, which are really nasty to begin with because they use fossil fuel. They're bad in so many ways, and they create this sort of pretty hideous sort of ornament. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, next next page here, next slide, when we look at this historic picture, which is also a permanent background picture here of how well it fit in. You know, it didn't try to be sort of what, what happens a lot today, that things want to look literally like nature and right. sort of chevron uh, imprints on buildings or, or palm leaves that want to look like. But this is this is a building, so it, it, it's not to mistake, and it doesn't try to be nature. It is architecture, but it functions. Uh, upon the same principles as nature does, and that makes it blend in uh, first and foremost. And you know, so I would also say, say, too, that this is in a resort area, and it is not supposed to look substantial, weighty, it's not a bank, it's not a school, it's supposed to look sort of light, mm -hmm. it's supposed to look sort of fun, and it does look like that because you're here on vacation. So here's this funny exactly. cylindrical building with these very light textured exterior protuberances that are not like columns or serious. It's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. And, you know, notice the detail of the uh, the top of the building yeah. where the sort of the core shaft protrudes out, and then you've got this very nice sort of pedally yeah. uh, ring around it with these things that are, that are bent up and are, are very sort of flowery, very yeah. floral. But again, not in a literal way, still in an abstract way. Right. What mid-century was so great about it, we unfortunately have lost and should try to get that back. And another detail that is really sexy and really cool, if we go to the next slide, this is a picture. The big picture is from the website. The, the hotel has been uh, remodeled some years ago. Um, I find it a little unfortunate uh, because it's very sort of designed and takes away from, uh, you know, the original design. When I visited that before the renovation, there was just this sort of very sort of informal box, I think, on wheels as the front desk. Uh, because it's pretty much outdoors, because yeah. what they did is uh, the same thing that happens at the top of the building happens at the bottom of the building, that only the core is standing. Yes. And from there on, it's pretty much cantilevering out. And we, it's a little sort of uh, confused here or sort of camouflaged by that, by that canopy that itself is cool because it's a crazy cantilevering canopy. Yes, so it, it could is. be a late entry to the show we did about that. But it's a little bit distracting from that aspect of the whole building cantilevering. But we see that on the next slide here, which you provided from your archive. It's a treasure because it's a picture of an architectural model. Right. That uh, reminds me of my dear friend, Brett um, Zegikaba. Hi, Brad, who is the last living and standing model maker on the island here. So this is a, I, I would have to ask him if he knows who, who the thing did. And here you can see better and more clearly um, how the building pretty much is very much tailored, uh, almost like a corset here, you know, uh, uh, that 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 minimizes its footprint at, at the yeah, bottom. Yeah. And there's another interesting, you can see how also how cleverly they basically were working with all these program things, the parking garage underneath. Yes, yes. So it's sort of the split level, you go up half level, you go, you go down half level. And they also, and, and they didn't want this to inform the appearance of the building because the appearance of the building is significantly different. And we've featured that in a couple of previous show. And let's go to the next slide and tell us about that. Well, the building sits upon a plinth. It sits upon a platform, a rectangular platform at the bottom. And to perhaps add some solidity or strength to that plinth or the basic foundation, it's got this basalt rock wall around it. So. On one hand, you have the solidity of the basement and then the more lighter cylindrical part sitting on top of that. But we also like that the base, this, this base is very open. So the Eggs and Things restaurant, which as you pointed out, is not just exclusively for 
the people staying in the hotel, but is for anybody off the street and is very popular, as we can see, it's also very open. Mm -hmm. So we've got a solidity, a sense of solidity, but we've also got openness, we've got free air movement and free movement of people in and out of that space. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's absolutely right. And, and again, talking about the sort of reverse exoticism, uh, we will do a show about some of my you know, trips here I did, and we will do one about a time in Zurich I had uh, with Suzanne, and we were uh, pretty much, we had just barely above freezing, and people were so hungry to sit outside, and they bundle <laughs> up, and they have little heaters, and maybe they smoke to feel warmer, but they sit outside whenever it's somehow doable, whereas in Honolulu, unfortunately, so often people basically hide inside in yeah. this pseudo comfortable AC, which makes me always sick, and they don't appreciate the outdoors yeah. as much as they should. Yes. And here you can see there, there's table. This is one of the few examples where they actually tables on the street, yeah. um, and, yeah. and you can sit and, and enjoy the outdoors. Yes. So it creates a sort of you know, engagement. It's a very, as you pointed out, an, an inclusive approach versus an exclusive. Yes. There is no sort of front door with a guard yes. or something like that. Right. And then you have that AC blasting. This is very much, very exotically uh, tropical. Yeah. And um, uh, we're slowly but surely phasing out, so let's get to our tradition of our polemic propositions and, and demonstrate what we can learn from these treasures Correct. that we have that we first and foremost better keep. Right. And, and secondly, build some more of that because you're going to be 110, I trust you on that, <laughs> so when then you're still, you know, in your archives, <laughs> you wanna, we want to talk about stuff uh, in 50 years that has to be built now, right? I guess we do. I guess we do. Well, if we go to the next picture, okay. we are going to see a proposed building. This is called Primitiva. This is from Martin's budding architects at University of Hawaii. It is a cylindrical building. As you can see, it has a different type of interior structure with a steel frame. But this is, we're, we're going back to the cylindrical form. And if we go to the next picture, we can see here that not only do we have the, the open space for the interactions of the people who live there, but the, the rest of the building is open as well. So it isn't intended to be as enclosed or hermetic. The individual dwelling spaces are more open. They are more multi-purpose. They can be accessed by different people, as we were talking about. And so uh, we've also got yeah. a situation where we don't have solid exterior walls, but we're using vegetation as a screening device on the outside. So again, air movement and oxygen and good things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to say um, that, of course, it has the same sort of layout of dwelling spaces, which are like pie yes, shape. Yes, that's right. You cut them out. And I have to sort of make a little correction. And we probably, it's a good thing because it makes us probably have to, we should probably talk more about that. The structure is indeed also concrete, okay. although it looks like steel. And the reason right. why it's so filigree, because I had the chance to uh, run the project by uh, our, the, the legend, talking engineers, the engineering legend uh, on the island, who, when you, you name all the fantastic buildings from the past, you name them all, Dr. Alfred Yee was behind them as the mastermind engineer. And, and so I had the chance to visit with him once before he passed away uh, in his 90s after a very successful life. And, and so he sort of endorsed the project, and I'm very, very humble and, and thrilled about that. Again, learning from these masters and trying to do uh, stuff that's, you know, tries to be as good. And, and that's tough as we keep talking because rules and regulations and codes and stuff have, have been, become tougher. So it's hard to be as good because the zeitgeist has changed. We're way more paranoid. We're way more uh, liability confused yeah. and all these things. And yeah. that, that maybe gets us to the next picture here because we're introducing um, our project um, uh, Primitiva One is is a is a team member of a subcategory of cylindric buildings because it has a cylindrical core that is open, and there is also examples for that in the world. And the most prominent and most sort of controversially 
this, you know, to be received is the Ponte City Apartments in Johannesburg in South Africa. And this is a social housing project, which is the key for us because Primitiva One is in a way that as well in a very inclusive way here because you create a, a once you put the same of the same people in something, you create a ghetto and it doesn't matter if it's for rich people like in Kakahaka, all the towers, it's ghetto, a rich ghetto. Yeah. This is sort of more lower income, so it was a poor ghetto and people weren't, when you throw the same people, uh, poor people in there, they don't basically identify themselves with what they have. So they use that big hole as a trash chute, which you can see on the very right side. Uh, it's been cleaned up and remodeled by now. So, um, uh, But we have an example of that subcategory in, in Honolulu as well, and that's the bottom row of pictures, and explain us where that is. Well, this is the Kaimaki Jade, and uh, as you were pointing out, you can see, first of all, there is one of the rooms in the Jade building, and it's got our wonderful jealousies and a view of Diamond Head, and it's got uh, free air movement, etc. but it's also, as you pointed out, it's got this open cylindrical part in the center. I've never been in it, but it's always been very intriguing to me. Uh, people don't throw let's trash Let's do a there. show about it. Yes, let's do a show about it. There we go. There we go. And, and did we decide that the uh, rooms have been remodeled and don't have jealousies anymore? We weren't sure about that. Unfortunately, we have to uh, basically be nasty about that in that show that we do. Okay. So unfortunately, no, <laughs> there are there. Yeah. yeah, next slide is, is Primitiva again. We're... We're celebrating the core here. We're putting in, we go as far as putting in stainless steel netting so the, <laughs> the air can go through, but kids can be on it and bounce, and it's going to be that trampoline. It's possible. It sounds like, sounds like crazy, but there's an art installation in a museum in Dusseldorf in Germany that do that. So it's all, sounds fictional, but it's actually doable. And the next picture, uh, as you pointed out, the Soto, it's using vegetation as, as a screening device. Yeah. And, and so here you can see that they will they would come across not as less than architecture, more as nature, and they're sort of man-made trees, if you want. So yeah. um, the next slide is sort of an, maybe for some people, unfortunate news that uh, Coco Palm Resort on Kauai by Pete Wimberley that we dedicated a show to is not going to be remodeled. We're actually kind of happy about it because on the top left, you can see how they said, wanted to do it, and it's not living up to the original super cool integrity that you can see at the top in the middle. And especially at the top right, we picked this from the local news here, the number of homeless living on Kauai Street nearly doubled since last year. So it's a resort is also not addressing that pressing issue. We just have a different side guide. Yeah, and next right. slide, referring to a previous guest that we've been doing multiple shows, this is Nathan Toothman and his elevate structure here in a, in a very recent update picture of that. And this is a little uh, bonsai uh, circle tower, actually a multitude of them. And they're very cool because they can basically change from being um, uh, playground trees uh, over the day for the kids and the tourists. And at nighttime, they could transform and morph into, um, into dwellings for houseless. So I suggest to populate uh, the grounds of Coco Palm with, with elevates. For example, and you pointed uh, out too that, that you can you can actually uh, you can inhabit the platform, but you can also live underneath yep. it as well. So we've got two levels exactly. that can be used yeah, by people. And they, exactly, and they're very cool. They're very cheap. They're very affordable. They would be the right thing to basically, I think, tribute to Pete's legacy, not in the way he did it, because there seems to be no way to to just redo it. Right. There were so many attempts, but to right. move on to a stage yeah. and, and, and contribute to the current challenges and, Correct. and opportunities Correct. In, in, in culture and society. Right. So we're phasing out to so the next couple of pictures here. Again, Hawaii 5.0 again, uh, the Circle Tower, for the reasons we discussed, has been an actor, has been a prime actor, as you can see at the bottom with McGarrett's uh, Car Mercury speedy here. Um, it's, 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 it's always there. It's, it's one of the big, big actors. And, you know, talking uh, reciprocal exoticism, yeah. it is today in, in the everyday news. This is when we <laughs> escaped, once again, one of the hurricanes yeah. recently here. Next, next picture. This was a German, this was a German, yeah, this, is a, this was a German TV coverage, just the news. 
and they were interviewing these uh, very northern German looking because the more north you get in Germany, the more blonde the girls get. So some northern <laughs> German supposedly girls here who have been interviewed, and where have they been interviewed? In front of the Waikiki Circle building. There it is. So also there is a there is a USA Today uh, site that talks about the building and the history of the building. And as well, the second to last picture, please, now is again how the thing has been looking in the past, and even how it looks today at the bottom, at the top right. Here's Will Bruder again. Not only did he like the dorms, as we shared before, but he also included uh, Waikiki Circle Hotel in his selection of the best things he saw. Very good. So pretty much uh, concluding is the last picture here. What we're seeing is bring, please bring, whenever they're going to do the next step of remodeling, and as Suzanne told us, it's going to be seven to ten years. They're going to do a totally haul over right. renovation. When they right. do that next, right. please go through the effort of bringing it back to the original, bring the wooden jealousies back, and luckily um, uh, times evolve and technology evolves. And the, at the top right, we refer to a show with Patrick Donahue, who is the master mind behind the new uh, innovative material of thermally modified timber, which we propose to be the new Hawaii wood, where you take local yeah. wood species that you thermally modify, and they will last much longer. They're especially yes. perfect for jealousies, horizontal jealousies, because the wood doesn't bend and bow anymore. It can't take any water, so it would be perfect. Yeah. So you bring it back to the, to the original beauty. And, and we were talking, and you were endorsing that idea to say, you know, within the sort of the increasingly corporate nature of the hospitality right. industry, especially right. these sort of smaller and, and still supposedly or probably privately owned buildings uh, might be the most interested yes. or, or able or interested to do these to things, do right? innovative things that are different from everybody else, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I think that brings us I to the end of the show. Of the we're wrapping up. Mm -hmm. we gotta, we gotta come to, we got to come to the end. Uh, thank you for being here, Martin. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I'm DeSoto Brown. We're ending up Human Humane Architecture on Think Tech. We'll be back. Our, Martin will be back. I'll be back. And until our next program and encounter, see you then. Aloha.